Hello and welcome. I'm Maria from Sew Through Time, and this time we're making a cage crinoline for under $100. In 2020, when the first lockdown happened, I figured that this would be a good time to do a lot of those kind of costumes that I don't necessarily have events for because there wasn't really an event anymore. And who knew when there would be the next time? So I first looked up, uh, looked into making a cage crinoline and I asked online what options people have used for cheaper ones because I couldn't at that time really afford the 300 plus dollar kits that were readily available. So what I was basically told was that there's no way to make a proper cage crinoline without using one of these kits or at least the hoop wire and that would at least cost 200 at least or even more depending on the size of the crinoline. Basically I was told that if I want to do it I better do it properly and I better just save up and do something else instead because otherwise why bother? And I personally have immediately an issue when I'm told that something isn't possible, that the only way to do it is to do it properly. Because that's gatekeeping and I don't really believe that that's really true in most cases. So I started looking into how to make a cage crinoline cheaper. I looked at my options and I tried to find options online, but at that point I couldn't come up with a version that I'd be happy with that was budget friendly. But that kind of stayed in the back of my mind that I am going to one of these days do it. And so now I finally have done it. Well, to first of all, to understand what I needed for a cage crinoline, I kind of needed to figure out what are the key elements that make a cage crinoline, a cage crinoline that works. First of all, it is made out of metal. At first in the early 50s and for, uh, 1840s, when big skirts started to be in fashion, they would use uh, at first just corded petticoats and adding more and more and more petticoats and layers and layers to get that fullness that they wanted. But by the 50s, the skirts started to be so voluminous that there were so many understructures required to keep that weight, that height, that volume up, that it started being extremely heavy and impractical. So they started figuring out other ways of making this and their answer is steel hoops. These steel hoops need to be strong enough to hold the weight of the skirt without collapsing. So they can't be spring steel because that will just collapse with the weight of the skirt. But they need to be flexible so that they they can't have memory because if the hoop has memory when you bend it into say bumping into a table then it will be permanently damaged and you'll be able to wear the hoop only once or twice before it's all wonky and weird and you'll need something new since it's basically just metal i figured that the hardware store has to have something that could work for this and well, it turns out they do. It is called flat sewer rod. So yeah, basically I made a steel, a, a cage crinoline hoop skirt out of the stuff that you clean your drains with. Flat sewer rod is available in most hardware stores and you can buy it also online in places like Amazon. It usually comes in 50 feet or 100 feet coils. And for my crinoline, I used about 64 feet. When you buy this, if you can at all find it in a local hardware store, I would highly recommend that because there you can see how much it flexes and bends because you want to make sure that it's not too flimsy. But Basically what I did with this hoop was I figured out that I wanted the top hoop to be 55 inches and the bottom two hoops, because they're the same length, they're connected by a fabric to keep you from stepping into your hoop and tripping. So I wanted those to be 130 inches wide because or long because well I'm 5'4 and 
I figured if it's much bigger than that, then it will be ridiculously big and it will make me look like a munch munchkin. And you want the length to be slightly above your ankle length so that you can have petticoats that are lower so that they cover the bottom portion of it and add more volume, but so that it doesn't start to collapse at the bottom. Things you'll need to complete this project is 63 feet of that flat steel sewer rod, then you'll need 185 inches of cotton tape, and then you'll need one yard of fabric and 550 inches of that cotton cord to go over the steels. Measure and cut the steel so that the hoops have a one inch overlap. Grind the edges on one side for a better contact surface for the soldering. Cut the flat lacing cord to the finished hoop size and insert the steel into it. Next, you'll solder the hoops closed by first melting some of the soldering metal onto one end of the hoop and then the other, and then reheat it on one end, and then press them together till it re-solidifies, holding the two ends firmly together. Next, I measure and cut the five cotton tapes that hold the hoops together and the tape that closes it around my waist. For my 25 inch waist, I place the tapes four inches apart, leaving the extra inches for the front gap. Then I sew the tapes onto the waist tape. I measure and mark the distance between the hoops and pin the hoops according to my marks, checking afterwards that the placing looks even and good. My top hoop is 5 inches below my waist tape, my second hoop is, eight, is 3 inches below that. After that, it's basically just measuring, adjusting, and readjusting until it looks good.
for the actual reason why I covered my hoops, so that I can sew the tapes onto the hoops and they will stay in place and not move around. I measure 21 inches of my fabric so that the hoops will be sandwiched in between 10 inches apart, leaving a half an inch of seam allowance on both sides. I butt enough fabrics together to form the, enough, the needed length for the hoop. Basically this means that I make a whip stitch very close to the edge so that it forms a very, very flat seam. channels for the wire to go in at the bottom and at the top leaving a half an inch seam allowance at the top. Then I insert the wire into the channels and solder the bottom hoops together. seam the fabric hoop closed. I then attach the edges of my fabric to the edges of the tapes, folding in the seam allowance as I go, and then I sew it all together closed. Band, I sewed a hook and an eyelet. And here it is, the finished hoop skirt. I'm really pleased with how it turned out, and if you make one for yourself using these instructions, I hope you'll be happy with yours too. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe so that I can see you again next time. Bye!